Hello, Rich from PC Games N here, and a couple of weeks ago I got to play a demo of Rage 2. It was a short and very id-like corridor with lots of violence and shooting, and if you're at all curious about the surprise sequel, I thought you might like to hear about what I thought of it in more depth, hence this video. Remember to give us a like if you find it helpful, and subscribe for more videos about all things PC gaming. I approach a sun-blasted warren of shipping containers and chain-link fencing. It's populated by narcissistic Sex Pistols rejects and the chatter of their bragging and bickering. I begin my murderous rampage by cooking a grenade and tossing it at an awkward couple on the outskirts of the camp, announcing my arrival via the medium of jibs and pink mist. The demo I play at Avalanche's studio in Stockholm, and which E3 attendees will be able to enjoy on the show floor, is a showcase for Rage 2's big box of lethal tricks. I have guns, obviously, but also a razor-edged explosive boomerang called a wing stick making a return from the original. This can both detonate and decapitate its targets, and on top of that I have grenades, I have a melee attack, and through nanotechnology I have several special powers. Shatter is a palm slap that'll look familiar to Destiny Warlock mains, but in Rage it applies such force that enemies affected will collide with walls much like paint on a Pollock canvas. Mobility options are no less varied. I can slide along the ground, I can double jump, I can sprint, obviously, and thanks to another nano ability, I can make quick directional dashes. So those YouTubers who specialise in skill kill videos will find plenty to work with here, and Tim Willits, the head of co-developer id Software and creative director on the original Rage, is looking forward to seeing it. Your powers can be further heightened by activating Overdrive, which works similarly to a Destiny Super or an Overwatch Alt. It's a powered up mode in which all your guns hit harder and you move faster. It lasts roughly 20 seconds and when the fun stops you'll need to charge it up again by, what else, killing people. So you have a wealth of options when approaching gunfights, and I'm told that you'll be able to enhance your favourites via the game's streamlined upgrade system, thus leaning into your favourite tactics. However, the sense of empowerment that you get from such a well-stocked arsenal does unravel a bit upon contact with the enemy. Even regular thugs skew towards the spongy, shrugging off headshots and butt batterings from my assault rifle. This is possibly necessary to leave some headroom for Overdrive to be your superpower, but it is still pretty strange to see a skinny punk get up after taking a canister of buckshot to the stomach. More so than when one of Doom's imps does the same, at least. But none of this is to say that enemies don't react. On the contrary, they stagger and stumble with every bullet. The physics engine is another point of interaction, with nano abilities and the shotgun able to send thugs ragdolling off balconies. The bloodlust of Doom era shooters also returns, brought up to date with modern effects. There's a viscous stringiness about the sprays of gore into which enemies dissolve after a close encounter with an exploding barrel, for instance. And exploding barrels are just one of many id staples that are present in abundance. The setting for the demo is a dilapidated space centre made of steel catwalks and industrial concrete. The soundtrack is fuzzy synth that swells and thumps when a gunfight kicks off. The shotgun's pump action makes a sonorous chick chick that sends me right back to the UAC's demon infested labs on Phobos. Indeed, if you were to replace the mohawks and the bad attitudes with horns and snarls, you could easily mistake parts of this demo for Doom 2016. It's essentially a corridor sliced out of a larger mission that will, in the finished game, come after a 12 km drive across the open world. And I do get that it's difficult to demo something like that, but those are the aspects of Rage 2 that I'm most curious about, since they were the most heavily criticised parts of Rage 1. We haven't seen the proof yet, but those criticisms might not recur in the sequel, and for good reason. Always a proud engine developer, all of id's previous games have been made in id tech, with the notable exception of Quake Champions, which, as Willits notes, is half and half id tech and saber tech. Rage 2, however, is the first shooter made with id's involvement but in someone else's engine, Avalanche's Apex, which is designed to build open worlds. As a result, the original Rage's lengthy load screens are gone, and the open world experience will be very like Avalanche's other hits, which notably include Mad Max. There's a narrative reason to get excited about Rage 2's open world as well. A whole 30 years have passed since the first game, and I won't spoil how, 
the Earth's ecosystem has been revitalised. Where Rage 1 was unrelentingly brown and barren, Rage 2 will have lush forests and wetlands. The prelude to the demo has you sneaking through a vibrant swamp replete with some pretty stunning water and vegetation. That's the stuff that I want to see more of. Whereas, like Borderlands, Rage was clearly inspired by Mad Max, since its release we've had an actual Mad Max game, as well as a couple more instalments in the Borderlands series. So how fresh can Rage 2's open world really be by comparison? Willits is confident, saying that the game will have different plants that no one has ever seen before, will have water, will have ravines. He also says that they wanted to push society a little bit further. In the 30 years that have passed since the original, people have been doing stuff after all. Willits tells us there will still be some stretches of brown desert, but that the devs wanted to push that and get just a little bit further away from it. And yet, once again, we still haven't seen that stuff just yet. This demo feels like an assurance that the building blocks of big, bombastic gunfights are in place. Look how mobile and lethal you are, it says. Look how creative you can be in your killing sprees. Look how crazy, how violent, how totally off the chain. All well and good, exciting combat is of course essential, but given the studios involved, I wasn't really worried that Rage 2 would feel great to play at the level of bullets and fists. My point, really, is that good gunplay is necessary, but not sufficient. It sounds like that big bombastic mentality will run through the other areas of the game. Willett says that he literally brought more crazy than rage to his first meeting with Avalanche as a design note, and that they really liked that and responded to it because that gave them license to do whatever they wanted. We could have crazy animals like half sheep, half cow things, he says, because why not? So overall, the demo was a promising start, but even for a preview, it was pretty slim, really only showing the combat, and uh, ultimately, I felt that it raised more questions than it answered about the stuff that Rage 2 really needs to prove. Uh, in that it's made me pretty excited and pretty interested in the answers, though, I suppose it's done its job. Let us know what you thought in the comments section down below, and as always, thanks very much for watching.